In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve trigonometric equations uh, by finding the exact solutions and also finding approximate solutions using our calculator. All right, so we're going to start um, by looking at first degree equations. So first degree means that um, they don't have a power of 2, but all of our trig functions are power of 1. So solving a trig equation means to find the angle which gives a particular ratio. So remember that for each ratio, the trig functions are positive or negative in two quadrants, and therefore there will often be two solutions for each ratio. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So we're gonna look at exact values first. So to solve for the exact values means that we need to write the solution as a rational number. So it's not gonna be a decimal. Uh, this means that we're gonna use the special triangles or the basic sine, cosine, and tangent graphs. So to remind us what this, these triangles look like, uh, I'm going to draw them over here. So we have the 1 root 3 and 2 triangle. So our angles are pi over 6 and pi over 3. And the reason I'm using radians is I can look ahead and I can see that I'm going to be using radians here. And that's indicated by uh, the solution between 0 and 2 pi. My other triangle is the 1, 1 root 2, and the angles here are pi over 4 and pi over 4. All right, so let's take a look at our first example. So we see that sine theta is a half, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to find an angle that when I sine it, it will give me the ratio 1 over 2. Now I notice that the ratio is a positive value. So I'm going to draw two angles, one in the first quadrant, and one in the second quadrant because that is where sine is positive. Now, knowing that this one is an opposite value and the two is a hypotenuse, I'm gonna label my triangle that I've drawn here as one over two. Now, because I know I'm looking for exact values, I know that I have to go to the special triangles. So when I look and I match this up, I can see that it actually totally matches up with this first one, the pi over six, pi over three triangle. So this must be root three, and this is pi divided by six down here. So my reference angle, which I can see here, is pi divided by six. Now to find my other angle, which is this one over here, I need to use my reference angle. So my reference angle is right here, for that angle, and it has to be the same as my other one that I found here, so it's going to be pi over 6. And so, to find the angle in red, going halfway would be pi, so I need to take away the pi over 6, which will leave me with this angle here. So I'm going to go pi minus pi over 6, which gives me 5 pi over 6. And so then these two are my answers. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So we have 10 theta equal to 1. So let's draw my grid again. And 10 theta, so we're trying to find an angle, which will give me a positive ratio of 1. So 10 is positive in the first quadrant and also in the third quadrant. And I'm draw my triangle in the first quadrant to help me find the reference angle. And since the ratio is 1 over 1, I can place those uh, values on the sides of the triangle. And I know, therefore, then that's root 2. So using my special triangles, I can see it's a pi over 4 triangle. And so, therefore, my reference angle is pi over 4. Now I'm going to find my second angle, which is way over here in the third quadrant. And to find this, if I go halfway, remember, that will give me pi, but then I need to go a little bit more, so I need to add pi over 4 to give me that full arc. So I have pi plus pi over 4, and that will give me 5 pi over 4. And there's my two answers. All right, let's take a look at last one here where we have cotangent theta plus root 3. So this is one where we have a reciprocal. <coughs> Excuse me. So it doesn't matter whether it's a reciprocal or 
a non-reciprocal, so a primary. Uh, we do have to isolate our trig function. So I'm going to move the root 3 to the right side. Um, so isolating my cotangent theta. And now I can see that cotangent theta is a negative ratio. So it's negative in the second and the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to draw my triangle in the second quadrant. And this is root 3 over 1, which I know is my adjacent over my, oops, over my opposite, since it's cotangent. So I'm going to place the root 3 right here, and my opposite will be 1. So the 2 is here. <coughs> and then using my special triangles um, that I've memorized, I can see that this angle here, right beside the root 3, has to be pi over 6. So my reference angle is pi over 6. And the angle that I'm looking for, however, is this one here. So if I go halfway, remember that would be pi, but I'm not going halfway, so I need to subtract the pi over 6. So that will give me 5 pi over 6. All right, so let's call this one theta 1, so that we have an idea which one that one is. Okay, now we're going to find our second angle, which is not the reference angle this time, so this is a little bit different. I have to go all the way to the fourth quadrant to find my um, second angle. So if I actually drew a triangle here, the reference angle would be here, which is pi over 6. Now, to think about how to figure out this angle, if I went full circle all the way around, that would be 2 pi, but I don't go full circle. I have to go full circle 2 pi, and then I have to take away the reference angle of pi over 6, and that will give me the angle that I've drawn in green, my second one. So I have to go 2 pi minus pi over 6. If you want, you can get the common denominator, which is 6, so 12 pi over 6 minus pi over 6 equals 11 pi over 6. Now, unlike the other two that I did, um, the reference angle happened to be an answer, but in this one, the two answers are 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. The reference angle was just used to help me find um, the other two. All right, we're going to go take a look at three other different types. Um, we're still going to look for the exact value, but I'm going to show you something different. So if you take a look at all six of these questions here, um, they don't have any root threes, they don't have any ones or twos. Oh, actually, they do have the one, but they also have the zero. Now, I find that the easiest way to do these kind of questions is to think about the graph. So if we think about sine theta equal to zero, what we're trying to find is where is sine theta? What angles theta will give me a sine value of zero? So when I draw the graph of sine, so here's the basic one, because that's what sine theta is. We can see that it's going to be 0 at 0, and at pi, and at 2 pi. However, because of the condition back here that we don't include the 2 pi, then we're not going to also include our 2 pi in our solution. So we're going to say that sine theta equals 0 at 0 and pi. The next one, where is tan theta equal to zero? All right, so thinking about the tan graph, it has asymptotes at pi over two and negative pi over two. We get our first zero at zero, and then the next one occurs over here. And that's going to be a distance of pi away. Now the next one, you might be wondering, well, maybe there's more. But again, this is going to be 2 pi. So it's a little bit, well, it's not a little bit. It's out of our range, or our domain. So we say that theta is only 0 and pi. All right, so our very last one is secant theta equal to negative 1. And when we're dealing with reciprocals, I recommend that you change it to its primary trig function. So secant theta we know is 1 divided by cos theta. And then I can multiply by cos theta on both sides, or I can just think of this as flipping this over. So take the reciprocal on the left, which is cos theta, take the reciprocal on the right, 
it will still be negative 1. So the question is, where is cos theta equal to negative 1? So go to my cosine graph. And the only part where it's negative 1 is down here, and that occurs at a value of pi. All right, so I'm going to end with finding approximate values. Um, and when we do this, we actually need to use um, a calculator. So um, using your calculator, you're going to press shift, inverse, or second um, so that we actually find the angle. And you also need to make sure that you're in degree or radian mode. So I'm going to do one in degrees, and then we'll do one in radians. So cos theta equals negative 0 0.468. So what you're going to do on your calculator is you're going to activate the cos with a little negative 1. Okay, which is say that you're going to find the inverse. And when you do this, um, you're going to get 62.095 degrees. All right. Now you might be wondering, well, why didn't I type in the negative sign? When you leave the um, sign as a positive and you type in the inverse, you're actually looking for the reference angle. And I actually find that very useful um, because you're going to use that reference angle now to find the two angles one in the second quadrant, and the other one in the third quadrant, um, where those angles are. And now the 62.095, that is this little reference angle here, and also this little reference angle here. So those are the two 62.095s. So the first one, the red one, to find that in the second quadrant, we have to go 180 minus 62. 0.095 and that will give you 117.905 degrees. To find the angle in the third quadrant we go 180 degrees and then we have to add the reference angle. And this will give you 242.095 degrees. So these are our two answers. The reference angle is not an answer, it's just um, a way to help you find the other two. So I'm going to show you how to do this also using radians. So we have tan theta equals 1.432. So again, you're going to activate the tan, inverse tan. And you're going to type this in as it is. This gives you a reference angle of 0 0.961. And we know that tan is positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So the first angle is this one here, which also happens to be a reference angle. So we found that one already. So now let's find our second angle in the third quadrant. So to find that, we know that this little piece here, that's our reference angle. So because we're working in radians, because it says 0 to 2 pi, we're going to add pi to go halfway, and then we're going to add the reference angle. So this would be pi plus 0.961 and that will give you 4.103 so that will be your second angle let's do one more just so that you can see so here we have sine theta equal to negative 0.5 so like the first one i want to type this in as positive 0.75 so sine is negative in the third and the fourth quadrant so we're going to type this in, and we get a reference angle of 0 0.85. So that means this is 0 0.85 here, and it's 0 0.85 here. However, the two angles I want are this one here. So to get that, I have to go pi plus 0 0.85, because it's in the third quadrant, so it's a little bit bigger than pi. The second angle goes all the way to third quadrant, and to get this one is not quite full way, so I have to take 2 pi. I'm going to minus my reference angle this time, and I get 5.44. So when you're doing this, make sure that when you're working with radians, you set your calculator to be radian mode. And when you're working with degrees, you do need to remember to set your calculator in degree mode.